Hey, what's going on? Evan here. And today I'm going to be talking about how to get Quixel textures looking good in Houdini. And the reason why is because I struggled with uh, getting any good results. So I figured I'd just make a tutorial to, to show what I found because there's actually an extra step that you need to do in order to get your textures. Well, not all of them, but some of them looking right. Uh, if you look, this is the preview render that they show for the material. So this is the grass material. This is the preview render. And this is a render that I was getting. It looks something like this. So I'm going to tell you how to get past that extra step so you can actually make your renders look good. All right, so let's quickly look at my setup. I just have a grid with some UVs. So it's really basic. Nothing special here. Then I also have a dome light. And for my dome light, let me just switch this to scene linear. Uh, if it's on auto, the render is going to look a little bit too saturated with the HDRI. So this actually needs to be on the color space scene linear. And it says this in the Redshift documentation, in case you were wondering. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and bring up the render area, the render view. And right now it's looking really flat. And I'm actually going to, let me, let me bring up Bridge really quickly. And I'm going to go to the files. And the reason why this texture is not looking good is because this texture is actually meant to work in a game engine. And so, and the, the reason why I know that is because there is this texture right here that says ambient occlusion. Uh, but of course, uh, we're using Redshift, which is a ray tracer. So we don't need to input an ambient occlusion map, or we don't need an ambient occlusion map. But the problem is that the texture has been broken down into an albedo and an ambient occlusion. So what we need to do is we need to actually just combine the albedo and the ambient occlusion. And what we can do, we can do that by multiplying it at render time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my material and let me pull it up. And actually, before we do that, there's one one other thing we need to do really quickly. By default, this is really dumb, but Quixel, it does import your materials automatically if you choose if you choose to use the, uh, the Quixel exporter and it brings it in with the wrong color space, which is really weird. So the normal it's set to auto, but you actually want it to be on raw because and the reason why is because the normal map it's just vector data. It's not color information. So you don't want it. You don't want it to be transformed by a color space. So if you set it to raw, it's just going to be looking at the raw information. It's also the same with displacement, but I'm not using displacement for this tutorial because uh, that's not relevant to what we're talking about. Uh, the, the what's called the roughness is also needs to be set to raw. And in case you're wondering, like, or if you ever forget, it's pretty easy to check. If you go to the export settings, uh, let me check this out and then go to textures and you go to surfaces. You can actually look at each one. Like if I go to normal, it says right here that it's linear. That's the color space. And then the albedo is sRGB. And when, uh, let me click on, here's my albedo texture. When this is set to auto, it's, it's just using sRGB. In the way, you, you can test it out yourself. If you fire off a render on auto, then switch it to sRGB, it'll look the same. So I just leave it on auto. But you do need to make sure that the roughness and the normal and the displacement are in raw for that to look right. Now back to the other problem. So I'm going to import that with the RS texture. Is that it? Oh, I typed it wrong. All right, RS texture. And I'm looking for the ambient occlusion. That's good. And so we need to multiply the albedo by that, by the ambient occlusion. So I'm going to do a RS multiply vector. Uh, where is that? I typed it in wrong. And here it is. Uh, it's a if you do if you just do RS multiply it, it'll come out black and white uh, because you need color information and I'm going to drop down one more node it's going to be RS mix there we go and I'm just going to do mix you don't really need vector mix because uh, this is just black and white information or it's just float information so um, I'm going to drop the color in here and this is just going to this is just going to control uh, how strong the effect of ambient occlusion is on our albedo texture when we multiply it together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out and drop, drop it in here. And right away, we can see that the texture is looking so much better. And let me just mess around with the mix. So if we set this to one, this is essentially how it looked before. And you can see the diffuse texture just doesn't look very good on its own. And I mean, you can you can already tell, like if you if you go look at the material, let me go back and let me make this bigger and switch it over here. This is the albedo texture and you can tell that this just doesn't look right. So uh, that's why the render wasn't looking good before. But once you actually take it in and multiply it by the ambient occlusion, then it actually starts to look like grass again. And of course, this this render isn't going to look as good as the photo 
uh, the photo that they have for the render because I don't have displacement enabled or anything cool like that. I just wanted to, sh to show you how to get the the actual like albedo looking correct since you need to actually take the extra step of multiplying it by the ambient occlusion texture. And so that's basically all there is for that. And so once you hook up the displacement and you get some nice lighting, then the texture will actually look good.